Atlanta Falcons and the Detroit Lions. Adam, we're sitting three in favor of Detroit. It's an expensive three. Could be heading to three and a half. Uh, 46, 46 and a half is your total. Looks like Desmond Ritter might be in over his head. Doesn't look like this is really working for whatever reason. As you've pointed out several times here on this podcast, like they don't want to throw Kyle Pitts the ball for whatever freaking reason. Like you spent a top pick on him. Like the guy is a total mismatch. They don't want to throw him the ball. I, I just... I don't know. It almost feels like we're a bunch of prove it games here, but it's like, hey, Lions, if you don't suck, like if you are honestly to God, if you are honest to God, a real contender in the NFL this year, then you should beat this Falcons team. You should beat this Falcons team by double digits. But like it's 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 sitting three right now. It does look like maybe there's some Lions money coming in. Well, keep in mind, this game opened six in most places Mm -hmm. and it has been battered to Atlanta all week long. A couple of the sharp services came out with plays on Atlanta. So you say it's a heavy three, like three, three minus 20, but I actually think it's a three minus 20 with resistance the other way of saying, I don't really want to go to three, but this game might get all the way to three. It wouldn't be enough for me to come back in on Detroit. Detroit was one of those teams I really wanted to go back and watch more of after the opening week. And I watched a lot of that game against Seattle and it showed me two things. One, This defense really is bad. Uh, Detroit's defense is not good, and it looked really good in week one because of getting that fluky turnover against Kansas City and because they went against the Kansas City team with no Travis Kelsey. And also that I do think this offense has legitimate upside. Now, Mm. Amon Ross St. Brown is hurt. We're not sure exactly what we're going to get out of him this week, and that changes a big amount of the equation. Now David Montgomery is out, so we have to see, are they able to put a workhorse load on Jameer Gibbs the rookie to be able to perform I don't want either side in this game because as I said very loudly at the beginning of week one Desmond Ritter has not even showed us that he is a bottom half of the league quarterback and to this point of the season I would say he's probably been a bottom three quarterback so far overall so I don't necessarily want Atlanta I've said a lot when it comes to unders this week I got burned on it last week in what was the most remarkable over week in, I believe, what, almost 30 years in the <laughs> NFL? More overs than we had seen. Now, mind you, the overall scoring environment had been depressed. You had five or six totals that closed under 40. I think this is the one game where I'm I'm perfectly content to look over uh, yeah. 46. I, I don't think Atlanta's defense is particularly good. Green Bay found themselves in some spots where they missed opportunities to run that score out to 30 or even more last week and you can't judge anything by an awful Carolina team in week one and we know Detroit's offense is good and we know that their defense is bad Steven we get a a Falcons team that we know what they're going to do they're they they are going to use B. John Robinson that's for damn sure like they are going to use him they're going to feed him the ball he's going to get a ton of touches outside of that don't really know what the philosophy is really going on there with them and this Lions team we've seen some good we've seen some bad so far this season which which one which version do you believe um, I think last week was bad turnover luck for them. I think that's what cost them the game. Um, if you look at closing lines and what the market thinks of this team, you know, they were four and a half at home against Seattle. I, I agree that the move from the look ahead here from minus five and a half to six down to minus three, let's just say minus 115, if you can get it is too much. I would bet Detroit minus three, minus 115 in this game. Um, I think that's going going too far. They they had six and a half yards per play last week against Seattle. The Falcons defense is middle of the road at this point, I would say. They're not horrible like they were last year, but um, through two weeks, 18th in success rate and drop back EPA against Bryce Young and Jordan Love, who didn't have Christian Watson. So I think jury's very much still out with this Atlanta defense. I think Detroit should be able to score on them. So it's a little nerve wracking when you're playing the team that's gotten more respected, better action through three weeks than any other in the NFL, but I'm also getting the best of the number here. So I'm I'm not going to bet the minus three yet on the lions because why not just wait? Maybe we'll get even more Atlanta action come Sunday, the way the first two weeks have gone. Uh, But this is, this is going to be a buy point for me on Sunday. If it's, if it's minus three or better. It's going to be a it's going to be an interesting game for sure because both of these teams I think there there are there are big believers out there in both of these teams right like there there are teams like Adam like there there are, there are people out there that are 
beating the drum for the Falcons. Like, I mean, like yeah. that is happening. And there are certainly some people who say like, no, nah, man, this, this Lions offense is going to score on everybody. Like th- this is a game in which I think we can get a preview of uh, not, not necessarily are these teams for real, but how we might treat them moving forward. Well, I think the key is to read that line move in relation to reading what the total has done in this game. This game opened 44 and a half and is now up to 46 and the money has come on the Falcons. To me, that says this is not an under read, right? The market is reading this game as I think the Falcons can score on Detroit. Otherwise, you wouldn't see those two moves happening in concert. We should also note Decker and Vitae on the offensive line for the Lions both ruled out today, although St. Brown full participant on Friday. 